Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what my recent starting place for testing products using Facebook ads has been. So whenever you're running Facebook ads, you should be doing one of two things. You should be either testing or you're either scaling. During the initial testing phases, smaller budgets, pretty broad, different setups, different creatives, different audiences, that sort of thing. Run the numbers, see what comes back, see what results look like, and then you can make a decision of whether you go on to scale that product or not. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that in this video and what I've been doing recently that's been working really, really well. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. So this is an ad account for a new business that I started recently. Before I show you some of those results, I just wanna take 30 seconds of your time to let you know about a brand new 100% free dropshipping community that I started to give people a realistic approach to what it truly takes to start and scale a profitable dropshipping business. Inside, you will get 100% free access to some pretty awesome trainings that I've put together recently, namely my five pillar formula. So these are all the different trainings that you get access to 100% free, instant access, and you can go there and join now if you want to. Inside, I'll show you exactly how to find products that have very little to zero competition, but are in super high demand. So you can be the first person to advertise them, which is key if you wanna build a profitable and sustainable dropshipping business. So if that sounds good to you, head to the top link in the description below and I'll see you in there. We also do weekly Q&As too. So once a week, you get to jump on a call with me and put your questions to me and get them answered live. That being said, let's jump back into this ad account and I'll just refresh these results for you. Um, total spend so far is 110,000, which has returned 344,000 in sales, which gives an average ROS of 3.13. Obviously, this ad account is fully fledged scaling mode at the moment, but it all started with this. So this is my scaling strategy my scaling strategy, my testing strategy, sorry. So what I'm gonna take you through is the entire setup step-by-step step, so you know exactly how to replicate it. I'm gonna take you through my interest targeting options when I do use interest targeting. So I'll take you through when the best time to use it is and when it isn't. I'll take you through the pros and cons of this strategy so you know whether it's right for you. And then I'm also gonna take you step-by-step step through when you're running this strategy, how to make decisions at different steps and what you should do. So no matter what the eventuality is, you know exactly what you need to do next, okay? So let's start with the setup. Oh, by the way, I can share this for free with everybody. It's a new software called Figma that I'm using to put together things like this, just to kind of increase the value of my videos and make things easier to understand for people who watch them. So if you guys wanna get a copy of this so you can refer back to it at any point, then just comment the word sheet in the comments below. And if we can get, let's say, if we can get 10 people commenting the word sheet, then I will pin this to the top comment and it'll be a free download for everybody. So you can get your hands on this and obviously keep referring back to it in your own time. So the setup, I always start with one initial campaign. There's no need for more than one campaign during the testing phases. I'll always have one testing campaign per product too. This will be a manual setup campaign. By default, Facebook will try and lead you down the garden path to Advantage Plus campaigns, but they just don't work for me. Yes, it's worth kind of satisfying that question in your own mind, dedicating a little bit of money to see if they work for you, but certainly for me and the clients I work one-to-one -one with, they never work out. Manual is always best. Inside this conversion campaign, we're gonna have two ad sets, okay? Both ad sets are gonna have the purchase objective. In fact, let's just start with ad set one, not to overcomplicate things. So purchase objective for ad set number one, daily budget, this is gonna be the price of the product. So if you're selling a product for 30 pounds, that's gonna be your daily budget. I target the UK because I'm based in the UK. I always target just one country. Too many people try and take over the world before they take over their homeland. Um, that's a funny way of putting it, but you don't want to bite off more than you can chew. With these super small budgets, spreading it across hundreds and millions of people, it's going to require a lot of money and a lot of people to burn through, for Facebook to burn through and show your ads to in order to optimize. So I always focus on just one country. And believe me, there's plenty of potential in your home country. All ages, all genders, so pretty broad, no interests and all placements. So this is pretty much as basic as it gets. Ad set number two, same thing, almost. Purchase objective, daily budget of the product price, one country, all ages, all genders, but one interest category, which I'll mention and um, expand on in a second, and then all placements. The runtime for this is two days max. 
if you have big budgets, so a thousand pounds plus, you could go for three days just to get that extra data so you can make more of an informed judgment, which I'll explain more in a little bit, but two days, more than enough, okay? So one interest category, let's have a quick mention of interest tags in. In full transparency, it's been pretty hit and miss for me. Um, where I often find it works best is when you have a super, super specific product for a super specific type of person is when it often works best because it somewhat points Facebook in the right direction. So to give you an example of this, these different colors represent different audiences of people, okay? If you were to target dogs as an interest, it's such a massive market, right? So your product is only going to be slightly relevant because it's such a massive market within the dog space. There's so many different interests within it. One of them being, for example, dog walking. So that's slightly more relevant. When I'm picking these interests too, I try and make them as specific as possible to somebody who is spending money and who is super passionate about the subjects. So dogs, Obviously, you haven't got to own a dog to be interested in dogs, which is why it's slightly relevant. Dog walking, most, well, you can't go dog walking unless you own a dog, so it's more relevant. So targeting a dog product for someone who's interested in dog walking is more relevant. You've got a higher chance of a hit rate of your ad, your creative, your product actually resonating with the audience. And then we have an exact match, German Shepherd. Let's say you're selling a toy or a product specifically for German Shepherds. Instead of targeting dogs, which contains all these other dog breeds, as well as people who love dogs but don't actually have dogs. Instead of targeting dog walking, which includes, again, every breed, every type of person that takes a dog walking, you could target the specific, and this is a targeting option. German Shepherd is a breed of dog that you can target specifically. And the way, the places where interest targeting have worked best for me is when I've been selling a specific product for a specific interest that I can target. For example, German Shepherds. A big mistake I see a lot of people making too is they'll be selling a dog product for a specific breed, but then in their creative, they will be featuring a different breed. It doesn't make sense. You want everything to be as specific as possible, okay? So that it resonates as much as possible with your audience. So, Back to the setup, two day runtime. So per ad set, we're gonna be spending a max of 2X what your product's price is. I usually find this is more than enough to get a decent amount of data back that you can make a pretty accurate judgment of whether you're gonna start scaling a product or not. Inside both of these ad sets, we've got just the one video ad. This video ad is the same video ad for each. The key to this testing strategy that everything is fair and equal so that the results we get back gives us the ability to make accurate judgments of what we do next, which we'll be talking about in a second. But first, the pros and cons of this strategy then. So the pros, it stops wasted spend on excessive amount of ad sets if it doesn't work out. You don't need to test 10 ad sets to know whether a product is going to work out or not because the targeting options are so broad nowadays and Facebook favors the broad, then you don't need to test 10 different ad sets. You're just spending money on ad sets for no reason. After these two ad sets have ran, if the results are really, really, really bad and the numbers are just terrible, running an extra eight ad sets isn't going to change that. And I'll explain a bit more when we come into how the test works. So it keeps your, keeps you from wasting money, basically. The pros ensures a fair test between targeted criteria. So if, for example, you add in loads of different countries and loads of different interests or loads of different just bits and bobs and completely different setup, then the biggest mistake or often the first hurdle I see a lot of beginners falling out over is the country. You can test different countries, that's fine, but separate them by ad set. It's not a fair test. This goes back to the initial piece of um, information. So this brings us back to what the pro. So this brings us back to the pro. It ensures a fair test. It's not a fair test if you put all of the countries in your ad set together because Facebook will not spend them evenly. So if your budget is twenty pounds, it's not, and you target it two countries. Let's say you target the UK and US. It's not going to spend ten pounds on the UK and then ten pounds on the US. It's going to spend probably seventy, eighty percent of your budget on one and leave the other one kind of not getting the same amount of impressions. Um, so it's not a fair test. It's super, super important that you run a fair test in order to understand where the interest is coming from properly. Pros, 
it simplifies things with less distractions and less um, overwhelming. You have 10 different ad sets. All of these ad sets got lots of different countries in. It just ends up a mess with lots of different breakdowns to look at. It can be confusing, it can be overwhelming, and there's just no need for it, especially if you're new to this when setting up your very first campaign is probably overwhelming enough. Cons, the biggest con to this is it's slow in comparison to testing everything in one go. If you're more advanced and you already know how to structure an ad account in a way that makes sense to you, by all means, you can test a lot more than what I'm about to show you in one go. But for the beginner, then it's, it's just not needed. So this is exactly how the test works then. After the two days runtime, is it profitable? And I'm talking about the individual ad sets here. Is an ad set profitable? Yes scale that easy and I can cover scaling in a different video if you'd like me to but today is all about testing if it's not profitable then what you need to do is you need to go into the breakdowns of your ad account you need to look at and I can show you that in a different video too if you'd prefer identify the best age ranges so Facebook will show you all of the information all of the data per different age ranges it will show you all the data and information for the different genders and it will show you for the different placements as well placements is optional but it's in there for down the line. I would, in the beginning with these small budgets, just stick to best age and best gender. So find out whether it's young people who are clicking your ad the most or whether it's old people clicking your ad the most. Find out whether it's females or whether it's males. When you've identified what that audience is, you're going to test that audience with the best demographics. So it could be, for example, as an example, 65 plus people of an older generation in comparison to me. Um, it could be females and it could be the Facebook news feed that's working the best. So what you're gonna do is run that ad set, a brand new ad set with these best demographics, let it run for two days and then is it profitable? If it is, scale. If it's not, then it's most likely the creative. So you test a new creative and you go around this circle three times. So if these best demographics are not profitable, then you switch out the creative run it for two days. Is it profitable? Yes, scale. If it's not, go back around again and you do that three times maximum. If after testing three creatives, you still aren't profitable or at least break even, the problem is most likely your product. Tip, super important here, is make sure each creative is significantly different. So if you've placed a video package order, for example, with viral e-com ads, and they're great, they can turn around quickly and sometimes they can work really, really well but I never go for the four video package because the videos always come back. They're like, they're 95% the same. Make sure that these new creatives are completely different to each other. So the three creatives could be a UGC, it could be a viral e-com ad, and it could be an image ad, three completely different creatives. And then you've somewhat made sure that you've left no stone unturned and you've given it every chance to succeed. And if you just can't make it work after going through this process, then I'm afraid it's most likely the actual product that is the issue and it's time to cut your losses and move on to the next one. Before you do that though, it's always really important to identify where you've gone wrong try and find out the reasons why that product hasn't worked out. If you're not sure where to go to get feedback on that product, you can do it inside that free community that I mentioned in the beginning. You can jump in there, post it in the community and say, hey, can I have some feedback on that product? No question goes unanswered. I'm in there every single day. So I will see your post and I'll most likely do a little Loom video recording to give you some video feedback. And so with that being said then guys, thank you very much for watching the video this long way through. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. hope it's been valuable for you. Any comments, questions, video suggestions, whatever it is, just leave them down below. Don't forget to comment the word sheets. And once we get 10 comments, I will post a free download link for the information I just showed you. And don't forget to check out my free community too. Top link in the description. Thanks.